Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome to, well, the beginning cinema, anyway, of Breath of Fire 4. It's not too long, so we won't really be uh, worrying about it too much. But thanks for coming in. Uh, I am interested to see how this is going to go. All I've really seen of it so far is this opening cinema and playing around with the audience a little bit before I start the game. So, yeah, uh, pretty much just getting started with this. I think it's probably going to be a lot like the traditional Breath of Fire game of 1 to 3. I don't know really in regards to exactly how it's going to play out because I haven't played it before. But I figure it's going to be a lot more like a traditional game than it will Breath of Fire 5, which is what you can I'm looking forward to it though. Uh, I had people recommend that I play the game and people voted for it, so yeah, here I am. We'll see how this ultimately goes. I am probably just going to... I'm probably just going to stream about an hour tonight because I'm not sure I really have the energy for it, to be honest. I'm not working on a lot of sleep, so it's a bit rough, but it should be fine at least to get this started and to get a good look at how things are going to go in the game. Alright, so, let's go ahead and, there we go, get ourselves started here. I did look around the options a little bit just because I wanted to see if there was anything I really needed to change. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'll be changing particularly much, but, I don't know, it just, it helps. I definitely like the messages being fast. I prefer that in pretty much any game that I play. Then, the buttons is the main thing that I thought I might change up a little bit simply because, well, I'm not particularly a big fan of, excuse me, I guess I'm not a particularly big fan of the buttons the way that they are originally set up. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is leaving it with type two, because to me, the L2 and R2 buttons are more natural for a camera movement. And then I'm assuming when it says change rank, I'm guessing change the characters that are in front. I don't know. If it's anything like Breath of Fire 3, that's likely how it's going to end up. Alright, so that works for me. Then I think the screen is fine. I think everything else is good. So, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and get ourselves started. There is not enough... Okay, great. Alright, well, I guess I'm going to be doing some save stating, at least for a little bit, before I'm until moving some space around. So, yeah, there we go. I am going to go ahead and stick with the traditional name of Ryu because that is his stock name really throughout the series and I figure might as well. I usually like to stick with the traditional names when I'm doing a Let's Play if I can influence that sort of thing anyway. So I figure why not. I do have to wonder though if there is going to be any English voices in this, because you heard the Japanese voices during the intro, but I don't know about anything English-wise. Okay. Third day after we left the castle. Huh, okay. Which castle, I wonder? Heading towards the town of Sinesta. Oh, okay. So we're hunting for people then. Is Ryu the one narrating? I wonder. Not all we had to do was cross the desert, and then something went horribly wrong. At least that's the way it sounds, anyway. I'm guessing... Oh, well, I'm assuming that that's Nina. I would think it is. The Kray looks a lot like Ray from Breath of Fire 3, which I figure is probably what they're referring to, is what they meant to refer to on this. Oh yes, definitely a lot like Ray, although a little bit more, he looks a little more mature, I think, than uh, Ray does. But that's that's fine, that's natural, no big deal. Oh, 
Although, wait, is that them or is that a sandstorm? Or, well, I guess that's them. I suppose that's them. I don't know. It's hard to tell from... Yep, okay, that is them. All right. Now, the question is then, are they are they following the shooting star or... Oh, <laughs> nice touch with the lizard. That's good to see you, Coop. Thanks for coming in. And I'm guessing this is part one of the game, so it's set up into multiple chapters, I suppose. Well, gee, uh, no, no kidding there, uh, Nina. It's in the middle of the desert, so of course it is. And hey, ZBW, thanks for coming in. And thank you for the... Well, it's not like that belated of a birthday, actually. It's just, uh... Let's see, belated, 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 belated. No, it's not quite that belated. You're missing... You're adding an extra belated or two. But that's fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. I didn't get much of a chance to hang around the sanctuary that day, so I couldn't really say hi to a lot of people or what have you, but I did see all the messages in the shout box, so thank you, uh, all of you who did say something on there. I do have to, I do have to say, though, it's unusual to see Nina at the beginning of the game, because, um, I know in Breath of Fire 3, you don't see her until a few hours in. Oh, <laughs> failed nonsense. That's fine. I'd rather be too much for, or too much belatedness than not enough, I guess. Oh, now he mentions getting shade. Yeah, you, you might, have, might have wanted to say something about that earlier there, buddy. But how are you doing, ZBW? It's good to see you in, a, in one of the streams. I know it's been a while since either of us were really in each other's streams, mostly because of craziness and life and all that good stuff. Alright, so I wonder how... I wonder how this ties into things as far as Nina trying to find her sister. Oh, it won't... Oh, then it breaks off the sentence, so what's gonna... Oh, never mind. What's going to happen here? Oh, uh, I actually, I don't think I played far enough into Breath of Fire 2 to find that out. I played a bit into it, but for, I don't know why, I just got kind of bored with the game. Maybe because, well, maybe because I, um, maybe because I just finished playing Breath of Fire, the original? And so I was, I guess, a bit tired of the series at that point. Oh, and we get a dragon visiting us. Hello. And, well, that's good to hear. Or good to see, I guess. But yeah, it's... it's I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to put together. Are you going to be doing more uh, Nuclear Throne, or are you going to be doing other things? I was hoping we wouldn't be lucky enough to find it. Well, that's one way to put it there. Uh, I keep wanting to call him Ray, the Cray. I'm guessing this looks to be our intro to the battle system of Breath of Fire 4, I would think, anyway. Unless we were just going to ram into it. That works, too. Or we're going to try to run away from it. Let's see. Run away from a dragon with a giant sucky mouth. Ah, uh, gee, where could this go wrong? Okay, so, oh, okay. I haven't actually watched anybody's playthroughs of Undertale. So, I'm curious about that game. I've heard a good bit about it. Apparently, it's really good. I just haven't, uh, haven't had the chance to really watch anybody's plays of it yet. Uh-oh, that's not good. Hey, I don't, I mean, you, meant, you mentioned Monster Hunter 4. I've not played any of the Monster Hunter games. So, I wouldn't know what to tell you as far as anything like that. Okay, well, we got our ship wrecked by Dragon Great. 
favorite game that's come out this year. Wow, that is high praise. Oh, oh great. Okay, we gotta go hunting. Yay! All right, well, I guess my question then is, on what platforms can you get it? Is it just a PC game, I guess, through Steam, or is it something else? Or I mean, would you be able to get it through something else? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, that actually is a benefit of crashing at the edge of the desert. If we were in the middle, we would basically be going through, well, most of the way through the end of Breath of Fire 3, at the very beginning of Breath of Fire 4. PC only. Oh, um, yeah, fair enough. Let me guess, we have no money. If we leave our sand flyer. Wait, hang on. Okay, wait, hang on. Dragon attacks us. We get the ship completely wrecked. But Cray's sitting here going, wait a second, if we leave it here, it's gonna get stolen by bandits. What bandits are going to steal a completely wrecked sand flyer? Now, they might steal stuff in it. But who's going to steal something that can't go anywhere? I, I... I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But the rum! Why is the rum gone? You ever seen Mad Max? Well, I actually have seen the last one. I don't know if that's a particularly great endorsement of... Mad Max in general, but still. No, Nina, you can't go by yourself. I can't. Well, okay. Fine then. We're just going to renounce you. Goodbye. I didn't realize Nina was quite that stubborn. Desert thieves can turn anything into an awesome ride. <laughs> well, that is true. Yeah, I mean, it, well, that is a good point. I guess, well, the thing with that is, though, the bandits would have to have the spare parts with them. Okay, there's a town called Sarai to the south. I'm guessing that's where we need to go first. So, might as well, anyway. Yep, good luck, Nina. Don't get killed. Hopefully. That'd be bad. Be packed before you know it. Okay. This, it's the, it's the king's sword? Wow, you're giving me something this valuable at the start? I hope you won't need to use it. Sure. Just like every adventure. Gee, I'm training to fight, but I hope I never have to. <laughs> there you go, ZBW. <laughs> Don't forget to use the buddy system. <laughs> All right, so yay, we get to control Nina, and that is... Wait a second. Uh, hi. That was unexpected. What, what am I doing? Go away, go down. Okay, all right, well. Whoops. Sorry, still getting used to the button controls here. Hello, Nina. Let me change my settings because I expected my dash to be auto. There we go. Okay, there we go. I think everything else should be good, though. 
All right, let's see. Items, I've got three. Okay, basically full heals. And then magical metal can be used in camp to learn skills. Oh, okay. I'll hang on to that. Let's see. Special, she is, well, obviously magic. Let's see. Wind, light healing, and poison. All right. Her glide abilities come in handy. <laughs> okay. I just have to figure out how to use them. I don't know. It's it's going to take some getting used to, I guess. And we can have... Oh, holy crap. We can have six characters in this one? Wow, okay. Wow, duly noted. All right. Well, I guess since Nina's by herself, let's see. Let me try this out here. Can you actually move her anywhere? I can't tell. I don't think you can. This doesn't seem like it anyways. All right, back down. And let's see, we got camera. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, hi. All right. Okay, I guess I've got to... That's ah, forcing me to go in here. Okay. Oh, <laughs> More for assessing the light. Yeah. I figured as much when I couldn't actually move her, but that's worth a shot anyway. Hello? But merchant <laughs> fell in. Oh, good job, Nina. Nice. <laughs> well, at least she's not too stressed out about it anyway. But. Ah, uh, yes, she might be stressed out about that. Whatever you are. Yeah. Okay, she can travel to areas others can't. Well, that would make sense. I mean, if she could fly. But first, we gotta kill this thing, I guess. Or not, we'll just stare at it. Well, no problem. It's, it's not an issue. I'm just trying to figure everything out as far as everything goes. It's not a monster. Okay. Then it sprouts wings and... Flies away? Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe, possibly. Not sure what you're doing, but... Alright. It's a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, gotta catch them all. Oh, it's a person. Oh, it's a Ryu. What's up, Ryu? And it's a naked Ryu. Hi. Okay, what's up, dude? Um, you might want to put some clothes on there, buddy boy. This is a PG-rated game, I think. <laughs> that is the first thing she asks. <laughs> At least he doesn't have that stupid cowlick. <laughs> well, there, there is that. Oh, very funny. Ha ha. How did you get in here? Uh, I just kind of fell. Probably from the sky somewhere. How did such a big hole get here in the first place? Um, he seems to have made it. We suddenly seem to be encountering a lot of dragons. I mean, we saw... Yeah, the crater was kind of my fault. Yeah, I, I would blame it on him. That's just me, though. Okay, so Ryu is going to, I guess, be a silent protagonist, which is not really a big surprise. I think Ryu is a silent protagonist in 
I think he's, a, I think he's silent in all five of them, if I remember correctly. I've played all five of them. Well, now I can say I've played all five of them, but... Okay, yeah, he's gonna be silent. That's, that's all right, I can understand. He's silent in all of them, okay, yeah. I couldn't quite remember about five, but... Oh, okay, well, that works. You can just jump off his shoulders. And apparently use a giant rope. Oh, well, wherever you got the rope, I don't know. Do you play as him in all of them? Yes, uh, you do. Well, where are you headed? I'm headed uh, to the ground, out of the sky. Ah, wow, okay. Admit it, you're lost. You fell out of the sky and you have no idea where you're going. Quit being a man about it. Yep, we're going to the town anyway, so might as well. And we gave Ryu the sword, naturally. You might need it to get to town. Uh, hopefully he doesn't need a sword to get to town, although yeah, we do have monsters. Let's let's see. Let's take a look at the menu real quick. I want to check Ryu out and see. Did it automatically give him the King's Sword? I did. Okay. All right. So, excuse me. He is obviously better power wise. And then, good God, he is definitely down with everything else. Agility, defense. Wow. I didn't expect Ryu to be quite so. Well, weak is not the word for it, but I guess him being four levels below Nina probably doesn't help. Alright, I think everything else, let's see. Ryu, do you have any? You don't, okay. Let's see. Why are there two? Huh, okay, I'm missing something. Now, I think pretty much everything else should be good to go. Let's see. Can we? Alright. Nothing for... Alright, so we can't really go anywhere else except to camp. And then we move to the cliff. And it's going to take us back to... Wait a minute, hang on. Okay, is this the question mark areas? Is this what gives us... Let's see. I'm guessing this is where we would fight encounters, I suppose. I don't know, I'm still getting the hang of this, really, so just thwack me upside the head if I'm wrong. Oh, I'm not wrong, okay. Alright, it looks, well, it looks pretty standard as far as the, as far as the setup goes, let's see. We're looking at, okay, Lacey and often use rest, okay. So pretty much the basic first enemies here. Then charge, what does charge even do, I wonder? Oh, hi. Oh, that works. Okay, so charge, I guess, is basically auto battle in Suikoden. Oh, god, charge, okay, hang on. Well, that works. Okay, I'll take that, but now I understand. I probably shouldn't use charge unless I'm just auto battling. As far as... 
I guess Final Fantasy VI, I mean, I've made pretty clear in some of my other streams or in my LPs that Final Fantasy VI is my favorite Final Fantasy game, probably my favorite game of all time. And it's, I mean, honestly, it holds up pretty well to me. I can understand, though, to some degree. Oh, please give me an item. There we go. I can understand how it may not to some degree because it's an older game, obviously. But a lot of the a lot of the plot elements to me still really uh, really make a lot of sense. And yes, absolutely. Chrono Trigger holds up very, very well. Largely because of well, among other reasons, because it's short enough that you can I think it's short enough that you can play it pretty easily. And it doesn't really require a whole lot in terms of scaling difficulty or sort of level of difficulty. Oh, sweet. Okay. Oh, and it tells you the stats going up too. Nice. But yeah, I mean, it was... I mean, Chrono Trigger was short enough for me to be able to go through just on a whim and play it straight that day. Of course, granted, I had powered characters, so there's that, too. But, yeah, it was... It's a lot of fun. It remains a lot of fun. It's one of those games that I would have no problem whatsoever replaying on, say, a yearly basis. Or a, maybe every other year or whatever. It was... I think there's very good reason. Whenever they were developing Chrono Trigger, they called it the Dream Project. And it fits. Because in many ways, it is pretty much perfect. Not, obviously, it's not completely perfect, because there's no game that is perfect. But it really is excellent in so many different ways that I think it's well-deserved as being considered one of the greatest games ever. And, of course, the irony is they made it 20 years ago. So, go figure. Oh, and I got a croc here. Okay, I'll check out and see what that is. I forget what those do exactly. Not what I meant to push. So used to triangle being a menu and not square. All right, what do you do, croc here? Let's see, you. Okay, give 20 HP. That's not bad. And apparently you can just automatically see stats. All right, let me, let's see. Uh, you heal, Nina. That'll, wow, okay, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. All right. I think I'm going to get Ryu up to level 3 before I head out of here. I know I'm probably lingering here a little bit too long, but still, yeah, at least get some experience in before I move on. Hi. You look very, uh, very commanding. What are you exactly? Let's see. Go back. Scorpion. All right. Possesses a blind attack. That's no good. As for Final Fantasy VII, it's been a little while since I've played it. I still think it, it, I think it is a really good game. But I also think that Final Fantasy VII, to some degree, in terms of its continued reputation, has been a victim of its own success. Because... It was, it was such a landmark title, and it brought, holy crap, and it brought the Final Fantasy series to the States, it brought it to uh, big-time audiences, and really sort of legitimized RPGs as a, as a popular genre at all. So there's definitely that to be said for it. At the same time, though, I think it has, to some degree, been a victim of its own success, because it's kind of gotten overrated a little bit. Now, let's see, uh, okay, let me heal, not that button, quit flying me. I'll get used to this at some point. All right, let's see, uh, okay. Well, what I would say about old RPGs versus new RPGs is, obviously the fact that I'm sitting here playing a game from 2000, then I'm LPing a game from 2005, and that I've been doing uh, the lighter game, or the older games, pretty much exclusively, says something about what I think on the issue. But I do want to... I, I guess the position I have on that is... 
it depends on the story and on how it plays. And hello, Kooligan. Thanks for coming in. Glad you could join us. We are debating about the value of old RPGs or old games versus new games or mostly old RPGs and new RPGs. And, well, it's going back and forth a bit. Let's go into the cliff and see what we need to do. Of course, I'm betting, though, this is actually where I was supposed to start battling, so if that is, then oh well. But yeah, I, I am trying out, I I'm playing Breath of Fire 4, and I am playing it blind, so just having fun with it and enjoying getting used to this. It's not too different from Breath of Fire 3, so I think I'll catch on pretty quickly. But yeah, it's all new. All right, let's see, go over these cliffs. Great, thanks. All right. Oh, okay. All right, I go. Yeah, let's just charge you. I think we'll get you dead in one turn anyway, now that Ryu's level three. Yep. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate your contribution to the cause, including a little bit of money. But I would... I think mechanics-wise, the newer RPGs are generally better, if for no other reason than... Okay, I can't turn the camera very much. If for no other reason than the mechanics themselves, I think, have been worked out over time. A lot of the things that you see in new RPGs, I think are mechanics that older RPGs would have liked to implement if they'd had the technology to do it. Story-wise, though, uh, I'm that I'm a little less sure about. Let's see. Uh, biggest issue: don't take the storytelling risks. Well, uh, I think to some degree the newer RPGs do take some storytelling risks. But I think also what we expect out of RPG stories has gotten a lot more complex than it was previously. So there's that to it as well. Because we expect a lot more out of, say, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition or The Witcher 3 or something like that than we did out of Final Fantasy 4 or 5 or 6 or what have you. Now, one thing I will say, and this actually to some degree does relate to stuff that we have seen very recently, is... Oh, I missed an item? Hi, how do I get you? Or can I get you? There we go, hi. But one thing I will say in regards to... Oh, yeah, this will work. One thing I will say in regards to some of the mechanics is I think the mechanics changes have generally benefited RPGs a lot. And with the, I guess everybody's talking now about the newest demo or the newest video that was shown for the Final Fantasy VII Remake, a lot of the fanboys that I saw online are freaking out because it's going to be an active time, a um, full motion active time battle system. I don't think it's that big of a deal, really. I mean, because you saw it with Kingdom Hearts, you saw it to some degree with Final Fantasy XII and XIII. You see it with 15, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think if it's implemented well, it can be really good. If it's not implemented so well, then uh, it would be a little bit different, of course. Excuse me. Well, yeah, there is a huge difference between American and Japanese RPGs in that Japanese RPGs are much more linear in terms of their story drive, whereas the American RPGs tend to be much more open-ended, i.e. fallouts and what have you. We run out of the road, but we can jump! Well, yeah, I know he did, but there's a difference between what the director says is going to happen and what fans actually want to happen, I guess. Alright, all you have to do to jump is stand at a place and... Okay, hit X. Yeah, go figure. So, I have to be taught how to jump. <laughs> Good job, me. 